I have a 100 ton captain's license with a towing endorsement, but what I found is it takes a little more than that to become a sea tow captain. What kind of qualities, Mike, do you find are most important in a sea tow captain? Well, Steve, uh, first and foremost, all sea tow captains are local captains in that area. We know the water's inside and out. We know all the nooks and crannies, all the terms people call uh, different bays and different I'm in areas. front of the White House with the red roof. Exactly. Names that have been around for 20 years, but only a local guy would know. And also, we're in all kinds of situations. It's just pure experience, day after day, night after night, in and out, where every situation is just different, which helps us become more prepared for the next one. Okay, well, I've got experience on a wide range of boats. I mean, I'm a boat test captain. What's the difference between the kind of boating that I do and the kind of boating that you do? Well, mainly, Steve, when you drive a boat, you're controlling that one boat you're on, whereas we're responsible for two different boats. Boats act very uh, differently when we're towing them. Um, so, for instance, when we're going into a slip, not only do we have to be concerned with this boat we're on, but perhaps a 30 or 40 foot boat that's tied alongside of us that we're responsible for easing into a slip, and that takes a certain skill set that only experience can I teach. I should see how that would be the case. Mike, one of the misconceptions that people have a lot with the sea tow cruise is uh, they think you're government officials. Is that the case? Not at all. Uh, we're a privately owned company. Uh, we're made up of a, a network of franchises. Each local franchise is all their local guys, and we provide a service to the general boating public as a private company. So you're a private franchise owner? Exactly. So you're not government operated, but you must have a working relationship with the government. Absolutely. We work very closely with the U.S. Coast Guard as well as other local law enforcement agencies. Uh, we meet twice a year just to all stay on the same page when there, if there is an emergency, we could assist them in any way possible. Mike, I've been boating all my life. I've seen a lot of things go wrong in the water, and you must too. What would you like to see changed so people don't have to call you? I'd like to see more people learn how to use their VHFs correctly and learn how to contact somebody for help on them. We monitor the VHF radio on Channel 16 24 hours a day, and a local SeaTow captain will hear that, pick up the call, and come to your aid. A lot of boaters don't have VHF radios, but they've got cell phones. Will that work? Well, I always urge boaters to get a VHF radio and keep it on the boat, but for those who don't, they can always reach us on the telephone. We have a 24-hour call center that will dispatch help immediately. You dial 1-800-4-SEATO and somebody will dispatch a local boat captain. I hear a lot on the dock that you guys make most of your money off of non-members. Steve, that's not actually true, believe it or not. Most of our revenue comes from our members that stay with us year after year, they join year after year and expect us to take care of them and that's what we provide for them. I've got a membership, you get a call in from somebody else, who are you going to respond to first? The member always gets priority service. Well, after spending the day with the guys at Sea Tow, I came away with a lot of useful information. Uh, for one, I found out that it's a lot more advantageous to have a membership than to not be a member. And that's a very important thing in being prepared as a recreational boater. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.